Jennifer Kearns from Free California is with us on the program. Jennifer, how are you? Hi, I'm just fine, Cam. Uh, it's going to be really hard for me to get used to saying Free California is Jennifer Kearns. So if I uh, uh, mention the basic Freedom Defense Fund, I apologize. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. We are all over the place taking multiple states by storm. So, um, so no worries. Absolutely. Uh, Washington Times had a piece, Blue State Governors, bruised by gun control bills. The author, a, a familiar name to us. Uh, and uh, you ask, if, if, is Jerry Brown uh, next uh, in terms of being a blue state governor uh, who will be bruised by those gun control bills uh, right after uh, John Hickenlooper, right? That's right. Well, you know, as we speak, a stack of a dozen of destructive gun control bills, not just in state history, but in American history, sit on Governor Jerry Brown's desk in California awaiting their fate. Um, as you know, Cam, we've talked about this before. These are some of the most draconian gun control bills in the nation. And uh, and it's it's really all the attention of the, the nation are really focused on Governor Jerry Brown's desk right now. I did write a piece, a uh, column piece over the weekend for the Washington Times that, that really compares California to other states. Um, as we are looking to do some Colorado-style recall elections, uh, in the state of California, what we've heard time and time again is, well, uh, as you said on your intro, California is a lost state. Who would ever live there? Who would ever want to live under these laws? Um, so for the Washington Times, I actually did a bit of a study. Um, I looked for states that were comparable to the state of California, both in terms of their population size, uh, their leadership in terms of they had a, a Democrat governor, and in terms of their party registration. And what I found was actually quite surprising. Um, in states like New York, which is a very similar state, a very large state, blue state, uh, with a Democrat governor, um, who really has the same type of political profile as Jerry Brown. Uh, Andrew Cuomo comes from a long line of Democrats. Uh, in his family, comes from a political dynasty, much like Jerry Brown in California. And what happened in the state of New York is Andrew Cuomo, a fairly popular moderate governor, signed egregious gun control bills into law earlier this year. And what he saw was a blowback of 15 points dropped in his approval ratings. Uh, and those laws that he signed in the state of New York were, in fact, less strict than the ones just passed in the state of California. In fact, um, Cuomo's approval ratings uh, fell so quickly, the New York Post called it faster than a speeding bullet. Um, so this shows what can happen in a large blue state with heavy urban areas like New York City and Los Angeles to a fairly popular Democrat governor. Um, I compared uh, the state of California also to a neighboring state of Colorado, which um, you guys were just out covering those Colorado recall elections, yep. and the demographics are, are quite similar there, too, uh, as is the party registration. You have John Hickenlooper, a very popular, uh, once considered very moderate Democrat governor, um, who also signed egregious gun control bills into law, and immediately, since the day he signed those um, gun, gun bills into law, fell 16 points in the polls. So there's a trend happening here across the nation of Democrat governors, fairly popular uh, in those blue states that are signing these gun control bills and immediately seeing a blowback. And I think what it proves, Cam, is that the Second Amendment issue blurs party lines and bridges demographic numbers like the Democrat Party uh, never thought was imaginable. And I think the reason for that is the Second Amendment issue is as American as apple pie itself. Yeah, I agree with you completely, Jennifer. Uh, you know, I, we've been saying for years on this program, uh, the Second Amendment is not a right of Republicans. It's not a right of conservatives. It is a right of all Americans. And, you know, uh, back in 2005, I think it was, the city of San Francisco had a vote. It was Proposition H. It would have banned handguns uh, within the city of San Francisco, it would have banned handgun ownership. It passed 57 to 42 percent. Uh, it was struck down by the courts as uh, unconstitutionally vague um, before it could go into effect. But 42 percent of those who cast a vote in San Francisco, Jennifer, said, no, I want to be able to own a gun. Now, they may not all have been gun owners, uh, but these were folks who clearly believed in a second amendment right even if they weren't currently exercising it um and that's san francisco that's right 
Well, it's interesting you mentioned San Francisco. I've got an interview with the San Francisco Chronicle right after I get off the program today, which I think shows, again, that this issue really does blur party lines. It really stretches across demographics, as we saw recently in the Colorado recall elections. Um, We had more Democrats and independents signing those recall petitions than Republicans. Uh, As you know, and you met some of the great ladies uh, like Laura Carno and others who were involved in the recalls here in the state of Colorado, uh, we had women coming forward in droves saying, hey, we have a women's right to choose, dot, 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 how to defend ourselves. Uh, In in the recall elections down in Pueblo, Colorado, um, we had um, Hispanics coming forward um, to fight Angela Heron herself on the Second Amendment issue. So, Again, the Second Amendment issue really does cross all of those demographic lines, and I think the Democrat Party here with their blue state, big state governors have really underestimated uh, the, the feelings of the American people on the Second Amendment issue. And what we did over the weekend, um, we went to California, we brought some of our guys from the Colorado recalls, and we held a press conference on the steps of the California Republican Party State Convention. This is the gathering of the GOP from all over the state of California, north and south. And we held a press conference, and we did so for two reasons. Number one was to caution Jerry Brown that uh, those bills that are currently sitting on his desk, if he signs those bills, we do believe he will face the same fate as those big state, blue state governors in New York and Colorado that have seen their approval ratings plummet. And number two, we will not rule out Colorado-style recall elections in the state of California for any legislator that either pushed those gun control bills or voted for those gun control bills. And we're currently looking this week, Cam, at the numbers in a couple of districts. We've got four or five districts uh, that we're looking at right now in the state of California where people uh, who are legislators push those gun bills, and we'll be narrowing down those targets later this week. And we may go after a couple of those and and make them – pay the same consequence as those legislators in the state of Colorado. All right, Jennifer. Listen, I appreciate you coming on the program. It's great talking to you as always, and I uh, uh, hope that we can do this again very soon. Very much so. We'll keep you guys posted, and if any of your listeners and viewers want to check us out, we are on Facebook.com slash Free California, and uh, we'll be sure to keep you posted at development. All right. Thanks, Jennifer. Appreciate it. Good talking to you again. Thanks, Cam. Jennifer Kearns joins us from uh, Free California.